me, I was chairing, co-chairing a geopolitical conference for the Young Presidents Organization, YPO. And uh, one of our speakers, given the global uncertainty and challenges that so many noble lords have spoken about, said, I'm not a pessimist, I'm only an optimist who's worried. <laughs> well, <laughs> the gracious speech spoke about a strong defense based on NATO's values, and our new Chief of Defense General Staff, General Sir Rowley Walker, has just said that the UK has three years to prepare for war and an urgent need to restore credible hard power to underwrite our deterrence. And noble Lord Houghton said that our armed forces are hollowed out. Uh, noble Lord Lord Peach uh, said that we need more reserves. And one of the biggest mistakes that Putin made by invading uh, Ukraine is that NATO is now stronger than ever with Finland and Sweden uh, having joined. And five years ago, when we were celebrating the 70th anniversary of NATO, we had a debate here in this house. And I remember, I think I was the only peer who said, that we shouldn't have go for 2.5% of GDP for defense, it should be 3%. I think maybe the noble Lord Sterling also said that as well. Um, so I'd like to congratulate the noble uh, the Baroness Anderson and the noble Lord, Lord Coker. Uh, will they please commit to 2.5% now and aim for 3% as soon as possible? And as an honorary group captain, 601 squadron in the Royal Air Force, could the minister also confirm the noble Lord, Lord Lancaster has asked our commitment to the Global Combat Air Program in partnership with Italy and Japan for the sixth generation fighters that we need so urgently. And it's just wonderful news that we have uh, uh, Lord Robertson heading the Defence Review, helped by General Sir Richard Barons, who I shared the platform with at the University of Birmingham, where I've just stepped down after 10 years of being uh, Chancellor. <coughs> I'd also like to pay tribute to Lord Emmeth, who was an outstanding uh, Foreign Office Minister for seven years, and I dealt with him as a member of his India Council. And talking about India, isn't it wonderful that David Lammy at the India Global Forum, when he spoke just before the election, he said, if I become Foreign Secretary, I will make India a priority, and I will be out in India immediately. And he has been in India yeah, yeah, this yeah. week walking the talk. And I think that's wonderful. Yeah, We've got to try and conclude the free trade agreement. And this free trade agreement, my lords, we started negotiations January 2022 when I was president of the CBI. We've had 14 rounds of negotiations. Here we are two and a half years later and still not concluded. Could the noble Lord the Minister give us an assurance that this FTA with India, which will be the biggest FTA India has ever done, the fifth largest economy in the world, will be concluded? We only do 39 billion pounds worth of trade with India, which is the fifth largest economy in the world, and it's only our 12th largest trading partner. We should be doing much more. China we do almost 100 billion pounds worth of trade. And the Indian diaspora over here, the 1.8 million strong of which I'm a proud member of, I humbly and with pride say, what a successful diaspora, a living bridge with India. And isn't it a shame that we've had a prime minister of Indian origin for almost two years, and it is eight years since there's been a large prime ministerial delegation to India. Can I suggest to the Lord the Minister that Keir Sama, who is a great fan of our relationship, leads the Prime Minister of Education to India as soon as possible. And when it comes to the EU, I urge the government not just to reset our relationship. Quite frankly, we need to rejoin the single market with free movement of goods, services, and people as soon as possible. And as Baron Sati said, we need to join Erasmus. Turin is nowhere near good enough. It is the Erasmus scheme that is both ways. And the Labour Manifesto spoke about strengthening diplomacy and modernizing international development. Surely we should admit now We've got a new government. The merging of the FCO and DFID was a huge mistake and completely the wrong thing to do. They are both excellent departments in their own right. They should be departments in their own right. And DFID should have that 0.7% of GDP aid. Will the government commit to that? So, my lords, I conclude with this, that we are the UK at the top table of the world, except the EU. P5 of the UN, G7, G20, NATO, AUKUS, Five Eyes, the Commonwealth, the noble Lord Swire spoke about, what potential over there. And yet, we are not members of Quad, which is India, America, Japan, and Australia. We should join Quad and make it Quad Plus. We have the strongest combination of hard and soft power in the world. Our defense, although small, too small, our 24 hour, 365 day uh, a year nucleus deterrent is just very powerful. Our manufacturing, we're still a top 10 manufacturer in the world, and I chair the Manufacturing Commission, a proud manufacturer. Finance, top in the world. And as for our soft power, wow. Universities, 
best in the love world along with America. Our royal family, phenomenal, led by His Majesty the King. The BBC, watched and listened to by 500 million people around the world. And as for the Premier League, our Premier League football teams <laughs> and the soft power that they have. So I am confident that with the soft power and hard power combination we have, if the government listens to this amazing debate, the House of Lords at its best, we will be able to deal with this uncertain and challenging world. Well done, Karen.